the end of a repair on a GM vehicle, you may have replaced the engine control module or the body control module, but the engine will not start now, or it runs for a few seconds and then stops. So what's the problem? It most likely lies around the GM Personalized Automobile Security System, or PASS. On this Pontiac G6, we just replaced the engine control module due to a short to ground problem in the wiring harness. The unit is located under the hood next to the battery. Replacement is easy, but say you replace the ECM and the car still doesn't start. Is it time to return that faulty ECM? Well, no, the ECM isn't bad. The problem is that the car doesn't know the keys. On just about every GM model made since 1995, GM incorporated anti-theft features designed to prevent thieves from stealing a vehicle by removing the lock cylinder with a slide hammer and attempting to start the vehicle with a screwdriver. Yes, just like in the movies. The system is based on a key that can be identified by the lock cylinder. If the key matches the vehicle, the engine can be started. GM has made changes to the system over the years. The first systems used a key with a resistor chip. The next development was a magnet in the key that worked with a Hall effect sensor in the lock cylinder. The next generation used a transponder chip in the key. In all of the systems, the lock cylinder or ring antenna communicates with a dedicated anti-theft module, body control, or theft deterrent module. GM calls these systems VATS, PassLock, PassKey, PassKey2, and PassKey3. You can identify the different systems by looking at the keys themselves. This is a VATS key with a resistor in the body of the key. This is a key for the pass key and pass key 2 system. Just like the VATS key, there is a resistor in the key's blade. These keys can be found in both the single key and dual key arrangements. This is a pass lock key. It does not have a resistor. Instead, it has a magnet inside that signals a stationary Hall effect sensor and coded lock cylinder. Pass key 3 systems have a chip in the key. The easiest way to identify these keys is the stamp letters PK3 at the base of the key. When a new ECM, BCM, or theft control module is installed, the key codes are lost. The modules must relearn the keys for the vehicle so it will start. This is where the reprogramming of the keys can take two paths. For a shop, it's possible to use a scan tool to initialize a relearn procedure using an aftermarket or factory tool. With this method, the process of programming the keys can take less than 10 minutes. These tools can walk you through the procedure step by step. Just make sure you can dedicate 10 uninterrupted minutes for the procedure. One advantage of performing the relearn procedure with a scan tool is confirmation the key has been learned by the vehicle. Also, the ability to perform diagnostics is a definite advantage. If you do not have access to a tool that can perform this pass lock or pass key reprogram procedure, you can use the manual procedure that can take up to 30 minutes to program all the keys. It is critical to identify the correct procedure for the year, make, and model of the GM vehicle in the service information. Due to the many GM platforms and model changeovers, it can be difficult to identify which procedure applies. The keywords to search for in your service information database are pass lock, pass key, or VTD. The pass key 3 system on this G6 does not require a scan tool to relearn the keys. Just a little time, patience, and maybe a stopwatch. Let's get started. No matter the system, two items must be sorted out before beginning the relearn procedure. First, both the BCM and ECM must be working and communicating to successfully complete the procedure. Codes for communication errors must be resolved and cleared. Second, the battery should keep the voltage above 12 volts for at least 30 minutes. If you have doubts about the battery, use a battery voltage supply designed for reflash or reprogramming. The PassKey 3 anti-theft system uses a transponder inside the head of the ignition key. The exciter inside the ignition lock cylinder energizes this transponder when the ignition switch is turned on. The transponder transmits a unique signature to the theft deterrent control module. If the key signature transmitted is acceptable to the theft deterrent control module, then the module will transmit the fuel enable password to the ECM. If the fuel enable password is correct, the ECM will start the vehicle. Now let's start the actual relearn. First, insert a master key with a black head into the ignition switch. Then, turn the key to the on position without starting the engine. The security light should turn on and stay on. Wait for 10 minutes or until the security light turns off. Then, turn the key to the off position for 5 seconds. Next, turn the key to the on position again without starting the engine. The security light should turn on and stay on. Then again, wait for 10 minutes or until the security light turns off. 
Then turn the key to the off position for five seconds. Then for a third time, turn the key to the on position without starting the engine. The security light should turn on and stay on. Again, wait for 10 minutes or until the security light turns off. Then turn the key to the off position. The key transponder information will be learned on the next start cycle. Start the vehicle. If the vehicle starts and runs normally, the relearn is complete. Follow these next steps if additional keys need to be relearned. Turn the key to the off position, and within 10 seconds, remove the first key, insert the next key, and then turn that key to the on position without starting the engine. Repeat for any additional keys. So there you have it. For any of these procedures, make sure you include it on the customer's invoice as 0.5 hours of labor. Remember, ask the customer for all of the keys when they drop off the vehicle. For 2007 and newer models, record the oil life index and reprogram it back into the vehicle with a scan tool so they don't miss their next oil change. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the Cardone YouTube channel for more technical how-to content.